and columnist and former Ronald Reagan official, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, uh, joins us now for more reaction. Dr. Roberts, good to see you. So, uh, you wrote an article entitled Fabricating Terror. And the first question that you ask in that article is why does the FBI orchestrate a fake terror plot? First of all, th that's quite an assertion there. Uh, what are you trying to get at when posing this question? Well, uh, we know it was fake plot uh, because the FBI recruited the guy, made the bomb, and gave him the fake uh, detonator. He obviously was not a terrorist since he didn't know how to make a bomb and didn't know how to recognize a fake bomb. And so uh, the real question is why then does the FBI go around uh, at creating these phony cases where it has to recruit people uh, into fake plots? Now, allegedly, we have real terrorists. But we don't ever catch any of them. We only catch ones the FBI has to recruit. And, you know, we had the case recently of the man in Virginia. It was the same thing. Uh, they recruited him. We had the Miami 7 uh, that they, they said uh, they recruited them to blow up the Sears Tower. So where are the real terrorists? So since there are not any, uh, that to keep the people afraid, they have to go out and create them. And as your own news report uh, just showed, the American media uh, plays into their hands. And, and all of a sudden, uh, a fake plot, oh gosh, look what terrible things could have happened. But nothing terrible can happen from a fake plot. It has to be a real one. So I think that there are really <clears throat> many agendas that the FBI is serving. Uh, one agenda, they, you know, we are, the United States is engaged in wars of aggression that are war crimes under the Nuremberg Standard. And uh, the United States gets a lot of criticism. And so one way to deflect that criticism is to always have uh, acts of terrorism. And these manufactured, fabricated acts of terrorism are used uh, in a propagandistic way uh, to justify the wars against terrorist countries. And, of course, also, they're being used to, to create a police state. And also, uh, people are making a lot of money out of it. Look at all the full body scanners that have gone into the airports. Uh, Michael Chertoff represents the full body scanner company, the former head of Homeland Security. They, they're getting rich. And now the chief of Homeland Security says they're going to put them in train stations, bus stations, uh, sports events, uh, courthouses. Uh, they'll have them in shopping malls. They'll have them on the roads. So money is also a, a factor in this. All right, so you're saying that, you know, this particular plot was orchestrated by federal agents and you listed the, the agendas that you say. But, you know, your critics would, would probably question whether or not this guy at least would have done that on his own. What makes you sure, so sure that he wouldn't? <laughs> well, if he would have done it on his own, uh, I think they would have let him. They would have had a more uh, convincing case. Uh, but obviously, he had no capability of making a bomb. Uh, and uh, he couldn't even recognize a fake one. So I don't, you know, I don't think he could have done it on his, on his own. Go out and try to make a bomb. It's not it's something that people know how to do. So um, I, <clears throat> it's just like all the other cases. And um, the, the FBI goes out and puts an idea in somebody's head. Now, I'm absolutely um, uh, wouldn't be surprised that this young man from Somalia might be very angry because he lives there in Portland. He probably doesn't notice uh, any of his fellow Americans being upset about uh, all the atrocities the United States government is committing in Somalia against people of his ethnic origin. He's probably upset about that. Uh, people are indifferent. They don't know. They don't care. And so along comes the FBI and works him up. Uh, but there are a lot of people you can, you can work up to, to do things, and the FBI keeps finding them. The, the real question is, where are the real cases? that the FBI disrupts. Have you been able to answer those questions? Because, I mean, on the flip side, you mentioned a money that people are, you, you mentioned that people are making money off of this. But on the flip side, you know, doing what they're doing here is, you know, takes a lot of, of money, of time, of efforts, of resources. Uh, for what? Well, that's, that's the question. The FBI has spent a solid year 
to convince two people, the, the, the young man in Portland and the man in Virginia, to be uh, participants in a plot that the FBI cooked up. So that's the real question. Why are they doing this? This is the question. So it must mean there are no real terrorists. And therefore, they have to create them to keep the public fearful, to keep the police state measures going, to keep selling the body scanners, to keep justifying the wars of aggression. And so these cases are useful for American propaganda purposes. And that's why the FBI is creating them. So you're saying that this, you know, all ties down to money because, of course, the, the big question uh, with everything that you just say is what is the incentive here? Um, and you're talking about money. So are we to believe that it, that's all it boils down to? Because some folks would say that, uh, you know, experts that I've spoken to, whether it's this case or, or the case of the alleged Russian spies, uh, that these intelligence agencies, whether it's the FBI or the CIA, they need to prove their relevance. Look, pe people say all kinds of things. Money, I said, was one of them. I said another one was to deflect criticism of, of American uh, invasions all over the place and slaughtering of civilians. And another was to advance the police state. And these, these uh, uh, fabricated acts of terror serve all of those purposes. And of course, uh, the FBI and the Homeland Security have to justify their existence and their large budgets. And so if they're, if they're not any real terrorist cases, then they go out and talk people into creating them. Like, for example, the Miami 7. Uh, they offered them $50,000. Now, look, this was seven people living in a warehouse in Miami. They, they had some kind of a crazy religion. It was part Zionist, part Muslim, part Christian. <laughs> they were waiting on end times. Along comes the FBI and says, hey, we'll give you $50,000. Uh, you come join us. We've got this plot going. We're going to blow up the Sears Tower. We're going to blow up these government buildings. Well, these people didn't know how to blow right. up. Right, and that's actually something that we also um, saw in Anastasia's piece as well. I have to go for now, Dr. Roberts, but uh, always an interesting point of view from you.